Okay, just finished building my rifling press. We'll do a rundown of all the components. First of all, it's sitting on a uh, standard steel I-beam. And then it's uh, got a pedestal welded onto it so it can roll it around easily. Um, it's got a backstop here, just a welded plate of steel with the uh, clevis pin for the uh, hydraulic press screwed into it. That's uh, holding all the force from the press. This is a Harbor Freight uh, hydraulic long ram jack and it's powered by air so I have this hooked up to my air compressor and that runs the uh, hydraulic pump down here. You have to have that uh, hydraulic pump sitting lower than the ram if you're going to do it horizontally because these rams are designed to be used in engine hoists that are vertical and uh, one of the other really important factors in this is getting the uh, ram everything lined up uh, perfectly straight so that uh, you're not running into any issues once you start pressing. So if you can see here this is um, a galvanized pipe and inside this pipe are a bunch of these uh, bushings that I made on my uh, CNC machine. You don't have to use a CNC to make these bushings but uh, the reason why I did was um, there's like a channel that I cut into that for these springs to sit down inside so they just pop pop in like that so that when these bushings are compressed this gap completely closes um, so you have you're cutting down as, on as much of the unsupported push rod as you can and the push rod here's an example um, this is a quarter inch push rod made out of 1144 steel you can see how wobbly it is when it's not supported. So, you know, if you're gonna have eight tons of pressure behind that uh, push rod, you need to have it supported. So the, that push rod just sits right inside those bushings, just like so. I have, I think like 22 of those bushings inside this pipe. Um, and then on the very end right here, uh, I have a bushing that has a blind hole in it so it's not the the hole doesn't go all the way through it's only about halfway deep so the rod sits right in the end of that um, so when the ram starts pushing it's uh, pushing that rod and as it, all these bushings compress it keeps everything nice and supported as it emerges out the other end here so let's see if we can get a shot of that you can see the uh, push rod emerging from there um, and this end piece right here, it's just a standard um, NPT cap on the end of that. And I drilled a quarter inch hole for that push rod to emerge from. And then I welded some more of that um, galvanized pipe on there. Um, and that's going to act as a support for the barrel or whatever jig you're using. So in this case, um, I'm I'm gonna be rifling these really thin tubes, so uh, obviously that's not gonna be able to support itself. So inside this galvanized pipe are some uh, more bushings, but these don't have any um, springs between them. It's just all solid. So let me see if I can kind of let these out here so you can see. so you can get an idea of how this works. You uh, take one of these tubes and on one end, on, on one end, see how that sits in there nice and clean? But there's a blind, there's a smaller quarter inch hole for that push rod to go through. So it basically, basically it's holding that uh, tube by the rim of that uh, blind hole there. So it, so it keeps the tube in place, but it lets the push rod and the rifling button go through. So put, assemble that on there. Then these are just standard um, through holes for the, to put the rest of these on. So let me just, uh, okay, now we got the burr off there. So let's put that back in. Okay. 
Okay. You want it to be a pretty snug fit on this if you're doing a thin tube like this. If you're doing a thicker barrel, then you don't you don't have to use these because if it's thick enough, it'll support itself. But uh, you can see that's pretty much that's entirely supported, and when it's inside this uh, galvanized pipe, the pipe will keep those individual bushings from um, getting out of alignment. So it'll keep it nice and straight and true. And on this end, you'll get your rifling button. And that drops in. So if you notice when you, depending on how you spec your tube, the button will usually sit like that before you start pressing it in. So when you have this on here, there it's a, another blind hole and then you can just drop your button right in there. There's actually a little bit of a gap. There's still some empty space in there. So you can basically prime your push rod. You can uh, place your push rod in there so everything's contained at where the push rod makes contact with the button. So nothing will get pushed off course uh, once you go to run this. So let's go ahead and Get that galvanized pipe over it. Oop, there we go. Had a little resistance there. So that's uh, that's not going anywhere. And what then what we do is we come over here and uh, you can see where um, where that'll slide right in there and, and you have the push rod emerged so that when you bring this in, you have the button in right here. I don't, can't really see it, but let me see if I can get that focused in there. But the, bit, the button's in there, so when you when you bring this in, it'll seat itself. It'll seat itself. Uh, it'll sheath itself onto the rod. So let me go ahead and uh, get that in there. Okay, so I have it in on this end, and then uh, this is the base, the back plate end, and uh, that's gonna essentially contain that jig on the other side here, and there's an extra large hole to let the button uh, through on the other end, and so, you know, this is, uh, uh, it'll be all, most of the force will be held around this end bushing, so I've already run this once, and. Uh, it didn't deform anything, so it's more than enough strength. Um, and then uh, this basically uh, keeps it sheathed onto there and, and everything nice and straight when it's running. And uh, you can see I put two holes into this beam for this particular length that I'm doing, but I'm going to be able to, uh, because this is adjustable, I'll be able to do up to, I think, 22 inches on, that's the maximum length that this system will do because it's um, limited by the RAM that I purchased. Um, so so we'll, let's go ahead and uh, put this on here. And I got it up on a tripod now so it's a little easier to move this. But uh, that just sheaths on there like this. Got to see it. And it doesn't help that it's a little rusty beam that I'm sliding that along, but um, that's seated in there. You'll feel it bottom out. And then uh, let me, uh, move the tripod a little bit here. And then you'll see the uh, holes that I put in. You drop these high strength uh, bolts in like that. see what's out of alignment here there we go so that's that's not going anywhere so the reason why I left those loose is so that if I want to do like production or do multiples um, it's real easy to pop these back out pull the whole thing back um, drop in a new barrel and then slide it all back forward and run it again so I think we're uh, we're ready to demonstrate so I think I'll set this up 
right here so you can see the uh, barrel come out. So here we go. Oh, I almost forgot. So uh, one thing I forgot to do is you need to uh, put some lube down there. So I'm just going to use regular um, cutting oil. I know there's like some proprietary blends out there, but just having some sort of lube in there is uh, good. And I'm just going to keep uh, pouring it down here until it drips out the bottom. And uh, go ahead and use this to kind of work it around everywhere inside there. Make sure we're nice and coated. Go from the other end. That should be good. Okay, let me put this back in the jig now. Okay, now we're ready to rock and roll. Get this uh, pointer back over here. Should be able to see that uh, button pop out as soon as I start running this. <laughs> Don't do what I just did and uh, forget to close the um, retraction valve on the ram. You're not going to go anywhere. Okay, I'll start over on this side. So i um, got the airline hooked up to the uh, pump and I'll go ahead and start this. Fire in the hole. No. So there it goes. And I'll hand the camera off. And uh, so you can see the button emerge on the other end. Pointed on the other end. We're getting close. Oh, it's out. What the button, uh, the button came out. No, the button. The button's not all the way through, huh? No, it came, it came through. Oh, there we there go. There we go. Yep. Okay. So uh, let's uh, pull this thing out and see what it looks like. Oh yeah. So when we let the uh, when we let the air out of the ram, uh, the spring should push back the ram far enough. Uh, the rod, the push rod and everything, it should come back far enough for that to, uh, for us to get this all apart. So, let's go ahead and pull this off now. Oh, didn't quite push that rod, but that rod should just, yeah, you should be able to push that rod back. But, uh, alright, let's get this barrel out. Let's try and get this on camera. Puppy's in there pretty good. There we go. And sheet that. Take that off. Pull these off. It's a little tricky getting the last middle ones off. I should have put some lube on the on these bushings so I could get it off easier. <laughs> there we go. One more. Uh, I'm gonna have to. So if this one uh, doesn't want to let go, I didn't lube this. So just a sec. 
Okay, so I'm just gonna use this hole right here to uh, pull that out. Oh yeah, that's really, that's really in there. So what I'll do is uh, I'll get one of my scrap tubes to tap that out with. Okay. So you shouldn't have to do this every time, but I forgot to lube it. So take that. Let's see if I can uh, get a picture of the rifling in there. This is kind of, it's hard to get a good shot of the rifling, but you can kind of see that it did the trick. That looks kind of dirty. Let me uh, run that through. Let me run that through a boar snake real quick. Okay, I ran a boar snake through it. And uh, it's really hard to film this, but you get the idea. That's a fully rifled barrel. So, uh, I think it's important you uh, use lubricant, you have a good button, and you apply continuous uh, pushing pressure on that push rod, um, and you'll get good results. I'm plenty happy with the results of this. Uh, that's dirty on that end, but you saw. Um, let's see if I can get that. I think that looks uh, pretty good. You guys can leave any uh, comments. Tell me what you think. Well, thanks for uh, checking out my rifling press.